The topic is the Civil Rights Movement in Tennessee, and we're talking to the author of the book, uh, Dr. Bobby Lovett from Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Lovett, during this last uh, segment that we have, let's have you to uh, talk to our audience about some of the things that you believe to be special in reference to uh, your book here, uh -huh. and at the same time, at the end of which, we would uh, like you to talk about uh, some of the uh, signings, the book signings that you've had, uh -huh. and some that you're going to have, and how this book has been received uh -huh. by the various publics, because I'm familiar with some of the activity that has gone on around it, uh -huh. and I know there's been quite a bit of uh, stir in reference to the information in reference right. to it, so let's right. talk about that. Well, some of the unique things I think you'll find about the Civil Rights Movement in Tennessee is that uh, many of the leaders were female leaders like Maxine Smith of Memphis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the general movement, uh, it's a, really a, a, a male-dominated movement, but mm -hmm. some of the most important leaders in the South mm -hmm. and in Tennessee mm -hmm. were females who mm -hmm. have not gotten their due mm -hmm. uh, in the books that have been uh, generated so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and the book will talk about a lot, a lot of grassroots leaders uh, mm -hmm. in the civil rights movement, uh, white and black leaders who, who made a big difference mm -hmm. in bringing about these momentous changes mm -hmm. uh, in our state and also in our region and mm -hmm. also in the country. The book has a chronology for the civil rights movement in mm -hmm. Tennessee and the nation in general. Uh, in the back of the book uh, for the use of teachers so the teachers can mm -hmm. uh, get a lot of this information out to their particular students. Mm -hmm. And the chapters are organized in such a way that they are really kind of like a story that flows. Mm -hmm. uh, because what I found is that teachers did not know very much about the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Movement in Tennessee because there was no such book and they had no information really to impart this information to their students. Mm -hmm. And so as students come to college uh, and universities, mm -hmm. they know hardly anything about this particular movement. We forget that the average high school student was just born mm -hmm. since uh, 1985. Good. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. average college student was born, you know, about the same time, mm -hmm. 1980, and they don't know very mm -hmm. much about these particular events. So I think those are the strong, you know, points of the, uh, of mm -hmm. the book. Uh, the University of Tennessee Press, uh, which published the book, uh, I may say has done an excellent job in mm -hmm. editing the book yeah. and coming up with some ideas mm -hmm. to make the book uh, more useful for the general public, yeah. although it is a uh, history book. It has been well received. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is selling quite well mm -hmm. according to the publisher. Mm -hmm. It's only in hardback mm -hmm. uh, right now and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the book is about 483 pages. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, uh, according to the publisher two days ago, has been nominated for a National Book Award. Good, very good. Uh, that's a nomination, mm -hmm. so hopefully, well, that's uh, that's, that's perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the book may win that award. Mm -hmm. But uh, it also, uh, the book has been um, uh, introduced at Tennessee State University mm -hmm. with a book signing mm -hmm. uh, in November when it first came out. Mm -hmm. There will be a book signing at Davis Kid Bookstore mm -hmm. on uh, Monday, 6 p.m., mm -hmm. February 13th, during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And then three days later, uh, there will be a book signing at the Hermitage mm -hmm. uh, on, on February 16th mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock. The Hermitage is having its second annual Black History program, mm -hmm. which was well received last year. Mm -hmm. And so they have asked me to come sign some books if people will come, mm -hmm. and also to speak for them at that program mm -hmm. on the 16th. And uh, there are other places that will be signing books, mm -hmm. of course, to get it across the state mm -hmm. uh, in Memphis, mm -hmm. in Chattanooga in Knoxville mm -hmm. because the book is about, you know, the broad movement across the mm -hmm. state of Tennessee. You know, Dr. Lovett, I think you mentioned the fact that uh, many of our young people are coming to uh, uh, our institutions of higher education without any real knowledge in terms of uh, the most recent American history dealing with the movement. Uh -huh. What would you uh, suggest as the method whereby we might be able to reach more of our young people, not necessarily, not, not only with uh, information relative to civil rights, but that we might be able to uh, create a new consciousness among them. Uh, what, what can we do? Or what should we do? Well, we started with the premise that, you know, we've got to get to students when they're young in middle school and high school, and that's why we include this chart in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, to get to teachers, you have to educate the teachers about uh, this mm -hmm. kind of history, but especially about Tennessee history, period. Mm -hmm. 
and many of our students have lived in Tennessee all their lives mm -hmm. and they know very little about Tennessee history mm -hmm. unless they come to say Tennessee State mm -hmm. where they take a Tennessee history course mm -hmm. but only if they are a teacher ed mm -hmm. majors you know they take that course and so uh, surveys across the nation show mm -hmm. that the level of historical literacy about American history and then state history mm -hmm. period is not what any of us would like it to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've got to do a better job on, in the secondary schools. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Lovett, uh, one thing in reference to the Civil Rights Movement, and I want you to think, you mean, think in terms of speaking to our young people in reference to this, one thing has to do with uh, the vote. You see, and, uh, uh, how did you uh, see the vote in, in terms of what you did here in, in this book? Well, in this book, uh, uh, you're going to find three chapters called Politics and Civil Rights. Mm -hmm. And of course, it starts with the uh, 18, 1965 Voter Rights Act mm -hmm. and how that act came about and what part mm -hmm. uh, Tennesseans played in it mm -hmm. and also how it unfolded across Tennessee and, mm -hmm. and, and how it empowered especially African Americans mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And it's such a massive story just for that short time. Mm -hmm. Uh, 1965 to 2005 mm -hmm. that it took three chapters uh, in the book to cover it so uh, you'll find plenty of information mm -hmm. on that and, 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 and of course you would you would also uh, encourage uh, people to become active in terms of what the movement was all about to uh, register and become involved in, in the political process and etc would, would that be uh, yes hopefully uh, a book like this would be a motivator for mm -hmm. this present generation mm -hmm. as well as the surviving older generations mm -hmm. to continue uh, that particular movement because mm -hmm. it's not over as I say mm -hmm. in the last part of the book mm -hmm. that there's a long long ways for the United States society mm -hmm. to go before our society is truly an egalitarian society mm -hmm. and it lives up to the creed of the Constitution mm -hmm. of the United mm -hmm. States. And if people are not aware of their rights, then they have no rights. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah. hopefully, if they read books like mm -hmm. this, they'll be conscious of what they need to do today because many mm -hmm. of their rights are being corroded mm -hmm. before their very eyes. Mm -hmm. And because they are not actively involved as citizens and mm -hmm. as voters mm -hmm. as they should be, mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution is being trampled on mm -hmm. today and has been for the last 30 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm reminded over the last uh, couple of minutes that we have here, Dr. Lovett, <coughs> of uh, some of the things that you said in terms of the Declaration of Independence at the 21st uh -huh. century, that it might not have been especially meant uh, for African Americans at the time, but nevertheless they were gerrymandered into it and it became a part of what we uh -huh. do. And, and, and I would imagine you would feel the same way in reference to uh, the Civil Rights Movement and some of the things that have occurred there, that these are our activities and that uh, the younger generation have to carry on those activities. Right. Is that what well, the African American Civil Rights Movement benefited the whole nation mm -hmm. because it has tried to force the nation to be inclusive rather than exclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the, the original Constitution mm -hmm. uh, was a document written for Anglo-Saxons mm -hmm. and gradually that Constitution has been changed mm -hmm. to include other people, starting mm -hmm. with the 13th mm -hmm. Amendment, which really radically revised the Constitution of the United States, mm -hmm. as I said before on this show. Mm -hmm. And then with the new amendments like the 24th Amendment mm -hmm. in, 19, uh, in the 1970s that mm -hmm. brought 18 years yeah, okay. into the yeah. suffrage and brought 18 years in mm -hmm. so that they had the right to mm -hmm. vote, we have gradually changed the Constitution of mm -hmm. the United States to be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. And then we have passed acts like the 1990 Civil Rights Act which uh, gave women uh, quite a bit of rights mm -hmm. that they had not had mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. and brought them more into the Constitution of the United mm -hmm. States. It's a living, breathing document that becomes more perfect mm -hmm. and more and more as we fight, mm -hmm. we get, get rid of the imperfections mm -hmm. in the Constitution of the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Movement has done, mm -hmm. has tried to get the imperfections mm -hmm. out of the Constitution of 1789. And, you, and so, Dr. Lovett, you would... Uh, probably say that in spite of everything that America has become better in terms of it being inclusive and bringing more people into Absolutely the and that's important because America mm -hmm. ought to be a beacon of light upon a hill mm -hmm. shining for all the rest of the world mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. If we're going to take democracy across the world as a product good. as mm -hmm. we're trying in Iraq, okay. then we have to pay attention to the civil rights movement as it continues. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, Dr. Lovett, let me over the last uh, 20 seconds thank you for 
coming by and giving us that excellent information uh -huh. in reference to the civil rights movement okay. in the state of Tennessee. And also, let me encourage our audience uh, not only to tune in again next week for another informative edition, but also to uh, pay attention to these signings and go by and meet Dr. Lovett in terms of this book. And let me encourage you to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning. Thank you.